here's the asteroid story. An asteroid the size of the Rose Bowl, more than a thousand feet across, feels its way toward the Earth right now. It'll come by first in 2029, and we'll see it up there. It'll be closer than our satellites, a thing the size of the road bo Rose Bowl hurtling through the air. And then it comes again in 2036, and that's when it may get interesting. The debate over just how close it'll get is sparking some serious debate between Russian scientists and American scientists. Here's a satellite picture of the thing. This is from, well, with this, this and, you know, this tells you nothing. But see it there? I don't know, that circly thing in the middle, maybe? Uh, this was from 2004. It doesn't look very intimidating here. Both sides seem to agree that in three decades, the asteroid will fly very close to Earth. But Russian scientists warn that our planet's gravity could change the asteroid's path. And 2029, it, it flies by underneath the satellites. That's right. Mark it on your calendar. Friday the 13th, oh my April God. 2036. The well, that's big the one. second pass. On the second pass, right. The first pass, like you said, it comes right underneath our satellites. You can actually see it whizzing right overhead. Wow. And on the second pass, it might actually be a nation buster. It'll take out Germany. It'll take out France, England. If not England, not England. <laughs> or the, the entire northeast of the United States. Careful. It'll hit with a force of 100,000 Hiroshima bombs. Really? If It'll, it hits? If it hits, right. It's a catastrophe beyond human comprehension. And the head of the Russian Space Agency has said that the Russian scientists should think of some ways of deflecting it or, or handling this deflecting menace it? in 2036. What, what, I mean, what, what are we going to do? Shoot it with a laser? Well, everyone thinks we'll send Bruce Willis out oh, there with the space shuttle. Idea. But the space shuttle can't even reach out of space. We're phasing it out, and the space shuttle only spins wheels around the planet Earth. It cannot even go to deep space. We need a new booster rocket to take us out there. Maybe China will build us one. Maybe, and then we have to nudge it out of the way. The farther it is, the easier it is to push it out with rockets so it'll, it'll miss the planet Earth. But it's something that we have to take seriously. This is the first major threat from a giant meteor or, or asteroid. Were it to hit us, do we know what it would do to our rotation around the sun and the, the spinning on the axis? Will well, it, it, will, it will definitely affect the rotation of the Earth as it goes around the sun. The immediate impact would be a gigantic shock wave going out maybe 50 to 100 miles, then firestorms going out to hundreds of miles beyond that. Firestorms. And then meteorites raining back down on the planet Earth. So the devastation would be on the order of uh, 500 to 1,000 miles. Think of a bullseye, a bullseye containing half the United United States. That's the potential impact. And again, it's a very tiny probability, but we're watching it very carefully. Because the thinking among some of these Russian scientists is that the first time it passes, the gravitational pull of the Earth could pull it closer, and then on the second pass in 2036, it the could wild hit us. card is also the atmospheric disturbances. It's going to come right, right to the outskirts of our own atmosphere. Mm. Friction is going to take place, and that's unpredictable. We simply don't know how it's going to react as it whizzes through the atmosphere of the Earth. And that could affect the second pass, and that's why we're keeping our fingers crossed yeah. in 2036. Two sets of fingers crossed. But isn't the world ending in 2012? The Mayan calendar seems to indicate... Well, if you look at the Mayan calendar, it actually says that it's cyclical, and mm. we could be witnessing a rebirth. Oh. We should be celebrating then. And personally, I'm gonna be, I, ho I hope to be around in 2013. So don't uh, sell the store, don't get divorced, <laughs> don't, don't ruin your life in, in 2012. All right, I'm sure some people will. News from the there is an asteroid discovered in December 2004 called Apophis, named for the Egyptian god of death and darkness. <laughs> it was named only after its trajectory was identified to intersect that of Earth. Had that not been the case, we would not have named it Apophis could name it like Tiffany or something, or Bambi. You know, something not threatening. This one was headed towards Earth, Apophis. All right, once you discover an asteroid, you gotta wait a little while to get enough of a segment of its orbit to calculate what the full orbit will be to know if it will come in harm's way. So, we did that. We, the community, I wasn't the one, we got peeps who do this, okay? <laughs> so, peeps, if you're over 30, means people, okay? <laughs> Forgive me. If I say you got peeps, it's people. It's actually a loving phrase. 
Right. It's not little yellow marshmallow. They're not. No. Right. So we get the orbit. Turns out, in the year 2029, the month of April, the 13th of April, a Friday. <laughs> Thanks. Apophis will come so close to Earth that it will dip below our orbiting communication satellites. And it is the size of the Rose Bowl. It will be the largest, closest thing we have ever observed to come by Earth. Now, of course, a much bigger asteroid took out the dinosaurs, but we weren't around at the time. So this is in, in the era of observing the cosmos with technology. This will be the closest, biggest thing we'll ever see come by. Now, the orbit we now have for it is uncertain enough because these things are hard to measure and hard to get an exact distance for. The orbit is uncertain enough so we cannot tell you exactly where that trajectory will be. We know it won't hit Earth. We know it'll be closer than the orbiting satellites. There is a range, a 600-mile zone. We call it the keyhole. If the asteroid goes through the middle of that keyhole, it will hit the Earth 13 years later. It will hit the Earth. 500 miles, sorry, 500 kilometers due west of Santa Monica. So it doesn't matter where it goes through that keyhole. Now, It'll that's if it goes through the center. If it goes through other places within that keyhole, then the contact point shifts further into the Pacific or closer towards Las North Vegas America. Or something. Yeah, right. Yes. Okay. But if it goes through the center, it hits the Pacific Ocean, plunges down into the Pacific to a depth of three miles, at which point it explodes, cavitating the Pacific in a hole that's three miles wide three miles deep. That will send a tsunami wave outward from that location. That's 50 feet high, five stories. Oceans don't like having holes in them. <laughs> so, this three mile high wall does what? You say that so timidly, sir. Uh, <laughs> collapses. It's a three-mile-high wall of water. Thank you. Falls back into the hole, sloshing against itself with such ferocity that it rises high into the atmosphere and falls back down to the ocean, cavitating the ocean again. So now you make a cavity a second time. This cycle takes about 50 seconds. You can calculate it, okay? So here comes the first tsunami, and 50 seconds later comes another tsunami. So there you are on the beaches of Malibu. <laughs> tsunami comes in. Now, unlike the tsunami in Indonesia, which was one wave that went deep into the shore, this first wave needs a supply of water to exist so that the next wave actually sucks back on it to create itself. So this tsunami will only go in about a quarter of a mile. <laughs> <laughs> we have the sound effects person in the upper <laughs> row there. So it only goes in a quarter mile before it gets sucked back out for the next wave to come. Here's the problem. Whatever was there on the coastline is now brought back out to sea. And the next tsunami brings it back to the shore. All the million dollar homes in Malibu, they get taken out to the sea and then back. But this time they're in a slightly different shape, okay? <laughs> and so what happens is all, all, the, all the artificial stuff, all the houses, the factories, they get churned into this ablative force that sandblasts the entire west coast of North America clean. So have a nice day. <laughs>
for that. Nice. <laughs> so, 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 but, but this big school. So, I'm sorry. I said uh, 13 years after 2020. I, uh, I misspoke. Um, it's April 13th, 2029, and if it threads the keel, it will hit Earth April 13th, 2036. So it's a, it's a um, seven year. 